if you watch SmackDown last night, um, Money in the Bank is now going to be at WWE headquarters, the building. So the concept is that WWE superstars will fight through the building uh, up to the roof where that's where you will find the Money in the Bank briefcase suspended. So uh, these cinematic movies, God. We've had Die Hard on a bus, Die Hard on a plane, and now Die Hard at WWE headquarters. yippee ki I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm sure it's going to be safe. I'm sure it's cinematic. But when you first hear that the briefcase is on the roof, the first thing you think about is the safety of the, the WWE superstars, right? But I don't know. I mean, it'll be fine. A big show fell off the roof at Cobo Hall, and he won the WCW title and beat Hulk Hogan that night. So nothing to worry about. Realistically, it is a, it's a cinematic match. It'll be another um, Firefly Funhouse or something. And I don't know if it's Die Hard at WWE headquarters. Does that mean it's a Christmas movie? Either way, TNT will not be playing it, but I don't know. Ugh, it's I, I don't mean to make light of the situation. It's just it's a it's a mechanism. It's 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 maddening that UFC Dana White could come up with a fight island and now WWE has got a fight building. You know, do I, since I live in Seattle, can I just go buy a fight Subaru? How does this, it's, it's a bizarre situation. And look, in a week when WWE laid off and furloughed so many people, WWE, WWE's idea for a theme of a pay-per-view when like 20 million people are out of work in the United States, the theme is climb the corporate ladder. And again, look, I, I know a lot of people are looking forward to it and that's, that's fine. And, you know, it's going to have fun callbacks and references, you know, but even if it's this incredible production with all these moments and memories, and it's like Charlotte in the wrestling factory with Vince McMahon as Willy Wonka with grapefruits, it's a little tone deaf still. In defending the decision made in Florida, classifying WWE as essential, both the company and the governor said, well, you know, WWE is needed as a diversion, a distraction from the realities of coronavirus and the world around us. And having independent contractors fight up and around WWE headquarters to get their hands on a WWE contract, which seemingly the company broke with some performers this week. That's anything but a distraction. I would say that's rubbing my nose in it. And look, I, maybe it's a coincidence. Maybe it's just bad timing, but we get it. You're better than us. It's, I don't know. It's, there is a divide, and even more than ever, it feels like it's being exposed. And granted, some people are not unhappy about it. I, I am not, if you have a different perspective, I'm not criticizing you. I'm talking about the perception. And I understand that, that Vince McMahon has got a fiscal responsibility to himself, his family, his company, board of directors, shareholders, employees, and the independent contractors, the WWE superstars. And many people are wealthy because of WWE Today and Vince McMahon. I acknowledge that. There's a lot of good. But while the WWE right now is on track for record profits this year, you, know, you do have to worry about the future. And that revenue may be needed in the future for unforeseen circumstances or to, to keep the company afloat. There are people who depend on WWE. And if you watched for a while, you know that WWE saw really lean times in 1997. A lot of that revolved around the Montreal screw job. And, you know, when WCW and NWO were winning those 83 weeks of the Monday Night War, I could appreciate that Vince still has that in his mind and that moves made this past week may mean that he's going to have to let go of fewer jobs later. These are uncertain times. Nobody knows what's next. But you know who else has, a, has an uncertain future? Um, the people who are owed money by the XFL. I saw on Twitter a photographer, just a regular person, says uh, she was owed $1,000 and she thinks she's, she's never going to get it back. And that is a big deal. I mean, people in the United States are now getting $1,200 from the government. And to a lot of people, that's make or break. And I imagine there are some people who were doing business with the, the XFL. And here's the thing. Nobody asked for the XFL. Somebody you know, wanted to buy the XFL intellectual property. And at that moment, Vince went, let's restart it. And he cashed out a lot of stock to prepare and made sure that he had a lot of uh, capital on hand so he could shoulder the expenses for the next three years of the XFL and assure everyone he could cover those losses. And while nobody predicted 
the worldwide pandemic. I respect that. Vince still has a responsibility to the employees and independent contractors. And I imagine that the people who made the agreements, the financial ones with the XFL, uh, saw the moves that Vince made as evidence that, uh, you know, they would get paid. I understand that bankruptcy happens and bankruptcy is an important social safety net, but, you know, Vince ain't exactly selling his house right now. And those people might have to because they didn't get their money for whatever product or services they provided. And understand this, what, I, what I'm saying is not about politics, okay? The President of the United States, whether you love him or not, you have to admit he's a polarizing figure. And he certainly has many supporters and a lot of influence. And Linda McMahon was, was a part of the President's cabinet and by all accounts did a great job. And whether it's true or not, there are people who believe that WWE used its political influence to be categorized as an essential business in Florida. Not saying they did anything illegal, but you can certainly see where people might get that perception. And a lot of times, perception is reality. And Vince is now part of the president's task force to reopen the U.S. for business. Here's my point. I am not radical in my politics. But I would like to think that in these times, with so much unemployment and uncertainty, that it might be a bad public relations move for someone who will influence public policy in the United States to declare bankruptcy and lay off a bunch of people in the same week. My first thought is that he does not show a lot of confidence on the surface in the future of the country and the ability of the federal government to improve the economy. You know, in America, they tell you to work hard, be personally accountable. I have friends who work in construction. In my state, there's a lot of pressure to declare private construction essential. I can see their point. You know, I have sympathy that they're not making money and they need it right now. I have a friend who owns a salon. Her salon's not essential. She'd love to see them be essential. Um, I have a cousin who's been really financially successful in other business, but he recently opened up a dessert shop in the last year and it's done really well, but right now, not so much. And he posted on Facebook um, after all the promises of small business support by the federal government, he's seen nothing and can't even get a hold of anyone. Um, and he thinks, and he said it himself, that the government only cares about big business. And whether you agree or not, acknowledge that the sentiment is out there. This is an issue that may be building. And if surveys are to be believed, believe it or not, pro wrestling fans tend to lean slightly liberal in their politics. Don't know that that's true, but surveys can certainly be wrong. Have never seen evidence to the contrary, though. And I'm sure there are a lot of conservatives who watch wrestling as well. My point is not to argue philosophy. My point is, why alienate customers? Just acknowledge that there's a divide, okay? And while nobody predicted the current crisis, WWE now finds itself, I think, in the public's eye, very clearly on one side of that divide. And if you support the president, that is, that is fine. I'm not criticizing any opinion. People can have different interests and they're going to advocate for them. I'm talking about public opinion and perception. And oftentimes, politics is a pendulum. You can go one way and everybody's on board. And then eventually, for whatever reason, things switch back and you're out of style. And while the president could be reelected in November, who knows right now? It's, it's, it's another thing that is yet uncertain. And... While Vince McMahon did what he thought he had to do in the short term for the good of his company, I'm concerned we may see some long-term effects. If there's a public backlash against giant corporations, what happens? Small business owners take a lot of risks, and we're going to see business owners and businesses go under. And they'll say that they didn't get a bailout and then lay people off, like some companies, whether they needed to or not, did. You know, I saw a story about an owner of a body shop who's kept his people on board. And when a record number of people are unemployed and businesses go under, right now, right or wrong, I, I could see public sentiment going that way. When something goes bad, nobody claims responsibility. And everybody backs off. Success has many fathers and mothers. Failure is an orphan. And if the general public as a whole sees the current administration as a failure, well, guess what? The poster children are Vince and Linda McMahon and WWE. You know, WWE was already losing money on house shows and seeing decreased revenue in other areas before this pandemic. 
and people are already going to be spending less in the foreseeable future. And I fear that these, you know, this past week, Vince may have alienated even more customers and potential customers going forward. I get it. These, these moves were necessary to save jobs and protect the company's future. But if WWE becomes a negative symbol of what's happening right now, what about all the people who's employing right now and their job? Vince still has a responsibility. And I think that maybe this could have been short-sighted that if he could have had the ability to absorb some of these losses and not cut people, it might have been a better move to see losses right now than down the road in who knows how much it's going to cost him in bad PR. Here's, here's the other side of the coin. There is one move that Vince made that has been incredibly successful in his decision. In 1988, WWE told the New Jersey government that pro wrestling was in fact predetermined and saved WWE a lot of money and hassle with state athletic commissions and many of them are inept. I see his point. But for decades, old carnies have said how it killed the business and Really, it's the opposite. I mean, I don't know if this was the plan all along or just an added benefit, but ever since Vince told the world that wrestling is a controlled environment, what the world heard is, it's fake. Even Ronda Rousey this week on Twitter, it's fake. Alexa Bliss responded, well, gee, I guess the injuries that kept her out for almost a year are fake then. It doesn't matter. It's fake. Wrestlers die. It's fake. Wrestlers suffer CTE. Doesn't matter. It's fake. People were let go this week. It doesn't matter. It's fake. So really, despite all of the real-life consequences and real-life situation that we find ourselves in right now, yeah, maybe there are risks. Actually, Vince was the smartest one. Because you know what? It doesn't matter what's happening. Everything is fake with WWE. I don't know if you meant to do that or not, but... It's brilliant and sad at the same time.